Here we go. Hello and welcome to this live session with mainframe automation and host bridge. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in mainframe automation. Hello, Ross. Tell us what mainframe automation is and what can go wrong. Hello, Anders. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to have this conversation. There are a number of things that can go wrong when you use an RPA platform to automate interactions with the mainframe. First and foremost, uh, it's, it's sometimes very, very easy to develop bots that simply make too many full travels across the network. And as a bot interacts with the mainframe, typically it's using terminal emulation and screen scraping, which from a mainframe perspective is probably the least efficient and the most brittle way to achieve that integration. Now, if it's just a handful of interactions, maybe it's no big deal. But we work with customers who need to be able to achieve um, thousands of interactions with mainframe applications. And so we work with them to find a more effective and efficient and less expensive way to, for the RPA platform to interact with the mainframe. Cool. And uh, the mainframe, we see it in the right corner, and uh, there's something we like in, in the whole picture in the background, that is UiPath. Yes, it's UI, what we're actually gonna be showing you today is a live um, mainframe application. Uh, we're actually then gonna be live using UiPath, interacting with that application two different ways. One, using the, the built-in UiPath terminal session tool, and then another way, where we're gonna be using an automation tool that we offer that runs on the mainframe. And that allows the UiPath uh, bot to send a simple HTTP request to the mainframe and then receive a single HTTP response. And we'll be able to compare the difference in speed. That sounds cool, Russ, and thank you for being here. And let me introduce you. I, I just told them your name, but you are the CEO of Hostbridge. We have James with us. Hello, James. And we have <coughs> Jerry as well. Hey, thank you. Hello, everyone. Jerry is the marketing guru, and James, you are the technology guru at Hostbridge. Is that right? Yeah, I, I'm kind of the guy that gets has to do everything that nobody else wants to do. So yeah, technology as well as a lot of other things. <laughs> so who should I give the questions uh, when we receive them? Uh, is that something that Ross and Jerry will do or will you um, get them in the end, do you think? Well, Anders, since James has already said that, that he, he does whatever we don't want to, I guess we should just send the questions to James, shouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sorry for interrupting, just go ahead, Ross. And okay, great. it's really awesome, this. Okay, well, thank you all very much. I'm gonna, I stayed on video just for a bit to be able to say hello um, and, and just express our appreciation. I'm gonna go off camera uh, just to conserve bandwidth. And then as you can see, I'm sharing my screen. Now, one of the things that I wanna do is just very quickly make a bit of an introduction here about what we're, you're gonna see uh, very rapidly. And we're gonna try to do this very quickly. So uh, hopefully, uh, if, if we skip over something too quickly, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to replay it. Uh, our objective is to focus on getting your UiPath bots and the mainframe to play well together. We're gonna focus on UiPath because we have a fair amount of experience with it, but in principle, everything you're seeing here can be used with other RPA platforms. Uh, we have a number of white papers or eBooks that we've written around other platforms, UiPath for sure, but also Blue Prism and Automation Anywhere. Uh, these are our friendly faces. This is who's gonna be on the line today trying to risk a live demo. So again, thank you very much. We've been around for quite some time uh, and we come to the RPA space from, a, from the mainframe world. So we focus on mainframe integration, modernization, orchestration. And as a team, we're the guys who are the team who pioneered the use of server-side JavaScript on the mainframe as an orchestration technology. Uh, we also develop um, software and methodologies to be able to help organizations modernize their mainframe applications. But here's what we've learned. Uh, if you really look at, at the way products like UiPath 
the way they're interacting with mainframe applications, nine times out of 10, if not 99 times out of 100, they're achieving that interaction using terminal emulation and then scraping the contents off the screen. We're gonna show you why that performs poorly and is very expensive. It also scales poorly. Uh, this is a graph that actually came to me from a customer. Uh, he called me one day and said, Russ, our business volume is growing nicely, but, but something has happened uh, in the world, and this is a global company. Something has happened in our distributed IT world where our mainframe transaction volume is going through the roof. What's, I need you to help me figure out what's up with that. Now, at this point, I'm going to go off slides, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin to work through the system live so we can uh, figure out what is up with that. So we're going to go off the slides, and I'm going to, first of all, uh, go to full screen mode on our terminal emulator. Now, what you're seeing is a live view of our, um, our, our mainframe. And I'm going to log on from this. So, you know, it's, it's a live session. I'm going to log on to a CICS region. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow through the exact steps of an application that we're going to have UiPath do in a minute. So I'm going to first log on. I'm now logged on, and I get a clear screen on Kix. At this point, I'm going to run an application called Trader. This is just a sample application. It was written decades ago by IBM. Uh, we just use it as a, as a demo application with products like UiPath. The way this application works, and this is what we'll be doing through UiPath. We're going to run the Trad transaction. This trader transaction is a very simple stock trading application. So simple, in fact, it only supports four companies. And so for each of these companies, we're going to have the UiPath script um, walk through and get a price quote. To do that, I'm going to say one in the input field. I'm then going to get an action or an option screen. Here I need to say one. And now I see the quote for that, that particular company. Uh, we're gonna have the UiPath script uh, extract or scrape five items off this screen, and then it's going to press the PF3 key, press it again, and then it's gonna do the exact same thing for company two. It's gonna get those, those values off the screen, <clears throat> back out back to this menu. It's gonna do it all over again for company three, someone, a mythical company called Headworth Electrical. It's going to press PF3, PF3. Then we're going to go back to IBM. And we're going to go real-time quote, and now we have it. So uh, then to get out of the application, we're going to press a PF3, PF3. I'm going to do PF3 one more time. I end up with a, now having exited the trader application. I'm going to press the clear key, and then to log off kicks, I do that. Now, that is me interacting with that application uh, by hand. Now, I won't show you. Uh, now, now, as you can see, I'm looking at, at UiPath. Now, this is the UiPath, uh, uh, you know, object that I've created. And what this UiPath object does is go through those exact same interactions. And so what you're going to see me do here, let me try to maximize a little bit here. Let me auto hide that down there. And now I can expand this just a little bit more. But you can see my UI path. I'm essentially, I, I use, I like structuring my UI path bots in a, in, a, in, a, in a clear way. And so we're going to begin the UI path bot. It's going to perform uh, that exact same sequence of interactions, and then it's going to show the data down here in the output area. And Russ? Russ? Yes. Uh, from an RPA develop developer to you, it is very, really cre clearly structured, so kudos for that. Well, you know, <laughs> um, I'm learning, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Uh, for the sake of time, I won't worry about drilling into this. You, you, the people on this call are all experienced RPA developers, I presume. Yeah. What I want to do is just watch it run. And of course, when I use the debug option, we're actually going to see it run. So here we go. We're running live. This RPA bot is now in flight, and you, we're actually watching it now do exactly what I did. So we are sending hotkeys to this application, like one, two, and, and these things, and typing something in, and like exactly. the, normal, the normal way we would automate the UI. Exactly. Normal in quotation marks. Exactly, yeah, normal in quotation marks. We're doing this. Now, the thing to notice is that there are, there are some very fairly long and awkward delays in this process. Because whenever you interact with a, uh, a mainframe via emulation and screen scraping, you have to be very careful that, you, that the data comes to rest on the screen and that you wait long enough for the data to come back. Okay, there we go. We just ran that. So let's go down here and let's look at the output. And uh, let me scroll up just a little bit. And as you can see, what we did was we ran that bot, and as a result of that bot, we extracted for each of those companies, uh, company one, two, three, and four, both the share price, the number of shares held, and uh, the total value. Uh, and we also know that the bot took 49 seconds to do that. Now, whether it, we've seen this time will vary a little bit, that's probably the fastest I've ever seen the bot run. Uh, other times it'll run about 55 seconds. And that just has to do with latency. Because again, the bot is running on my workstation. And each one of those steps required a request to be sent to the mainframe. The mainframe did what you told it to do. And an individual screen came back. And so we're somewhat subject to the speed of, of the bandwidth between the endpoints. Uh, or we are, we're definitely subject to the speed of the connection to be able to, uh, well, that will determine how long the script, it takes for the script to run. I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing a different way. And then we're going to let James explain what we're doing. Now, so I just opened a different project. I'm going to go ahead and go to the uh, to the main workflow. And you're going to know that Notice that this does something very different and far simpler. All this request is going to do is it is going to send an HTTP request over to the mainframe. And then that HTTP request is going to then inter perform those exact same interactions as we did before. In fact, just to prove that point, you can see that the HTTP request I'm going to is the same system, demo.hostbridge.com, but in this case, I'm invoking an ARP, and think of it, we call it a script, but you could also think of it as a bot, like an RPA bot that's running on the mainframe. And it's going to do those detailed interactions on the mainframe, under the covers of the mainframe, at memory-to-memory -memory speeds, not network speeds and we're going to be able to see uh the, see the difference in terms of performance so let me go ahead and close this and maybe that. maybe rush you can address why it's such an important issue here in the mainframe i mean usually when we automate we will look at api integrations uh, instead of the ui but is is it more or less important here in the mainframe well, yes. Well, it's, it's very important on the mainframe because every one of those input-output operations has a certain amount of overhead on the mainframe side. And by, by doing those repetitively across a, uh, a link, or I should say doing them individually, has an overhead factor that in aggregate really becomes a drain and a cost on the mainframe side. So not only, so let's just run it and see what sure. happens here. Let me get my cursor over here. Now, again, all we're going to do is press debug, and we're going to let this thing run. 
it's running right now, it's doing its thing, and it's done. Now, that was a little faster. Let's look to see what happened. So as you can see, the, the bot retreat, uh, ended up with the exact same data. Now, you'll notice that it is styled as a JSON document because the script that was running on the mainframe, uh, we told it to return the data as JSON because UiPath loves JSON and, and can easily process JSON. Mm -hmm. But more importantly than that, look at how long it took. It took one second. Now, in reality, under the covers of the mainframe, it took about 250 milliseconds. And that additional 750 milliseconds was just UiPath firing up, sending the request across the communications link. The script then runs, and then the response comes back, and then UiPath renders it. So what we are left with is a comparison. And I'm going to go back to a slide just to make this point really clear. And so let's go back. Let me interrupt you a bit, Russ. To the viewers that will see this session afterwards, I will make a guide to deserialize these JSONs. I actually made it so you can just click the video up here in the right corner to see how easy it is, uh, just as Russ tell you. And if you like this session, please give it a thumbs up. That will both help Hostbridge and my reach here on the internet. So that will help us a lot. And back to you, Russ. Great. Thank you. So for the first example where we use the the UiPath terminal sessions, uh, which is very common. In fact, we, we have organizations with mainframes calling us now saying, how can we optimize the way UiPath interacts with the mainframe? Well, this, the, this picture, this diagram typifies what we did first. And that is where when you use UiPath and terminal sessions, you end up sending hundreds or even thousands of individual exchanging individual requests and responses with the mainframe. As a result, the efficiency of this process or this approach is very low, the latency is very high, and the cost, both in terms of end user wait time and mainframe resource consumption is also very high. In the second example, what we used was our server-side JavaScript engine. And James is going to show you that in just a second and how simple it was to do this. In that case, from UiPath, we sent a single HTTP request. It invoked a service running on the mainframe. We did the detailed interactions with those exact same uh, CICS transactions unchanged and then returned a response. And we did it roughly 50 times faster. That is why we recommend for organizations that are, um, are doing a lot of mainframe interactions, that it is far more efficient to interact with the mainframe across an HTTP service call or a RESTful API call. The efficiency goes up the latency drops through the full floor and the cost, both in, both in terms of end user productivity and mainframe resource utilization goes way, way down. Now, the next question that is always asked is, okay, how hard is it to do this? How difficult is it to develop that bit of JavaScript running on the mainframe? With that, James, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let you share yours. Did the share open up for, for everybody? Definitely. Okay. Okay, excellent. Well, this is a piece of JavaScript, I, and, and many of you will recognize JavaScript. Uh, as Russ said, we took JavaScript and we ported it to run inside the mainframe, the host. So writing these services is writing JavaScript, which many of you already know, or it's pretty easy to learn. The service that Russ just called is only 39 lines of code that's how easy it is to interact with the host. So as Russ said, no changes to the application on the host. The customer doesn't have to make any changes to their existing applications. They write a little bit of JavaScript, or you write the JavaScript for them, that interacts with these applications. It's deployed into the mainframe one time, 
And now you have a service that's callable by anybody on the outside world. The RPA application has a direct access to the application through an API as opposed to doing that screen interaction back and forth. Right. James, thank you very much. Um, there, as you can see, it is just JavaScript. And we're very proud of the fact that we have many of our organizations uh, let me make sure, let's get our screen back up here. We're very proud of the fact that many of our customers, the people who are writing um, these little bits of JavaScript, have never seen a mainframe. They don't have to know anything about the mainframe. They don't have to know anything more about the mainframe application than what you would need to know if you were using UiPath terminal sessions. But, but it, it bears repeating uh, what the comparison is. And we look at it on this slide in four dimensions. One, from a performance standpoint, clearly, when you're, uh, when you're using terminal sessions, especially the longer the chain of interactions, the longer it takes. When you're using a RESTful service to invoke an API on the mainframe, all of that interaction on the mainframe happens at memory to memory speeds. And so the response time is significantly lower we also want to point out this, uh, this, this fact that whenever you develop a UiPath integration on the basis of terminal emulations, the resulting integration is very brittle because 99 times out of 100, if, if the mainframe application changes, if the screen format changes even just a little, the terminal session automation bot will most likely break. That's because the terminal session, uh, a bot built on terminal sessions, has to attend to or be mindful of the rows and columns and the length of every field it wants to extract. Well, many organizations, especially those that are still using mainframe, the reason they're using a mainframe at this stage in history is because the applications are extremely valuable and still evolving. So we don't, so it's, it's very important that UiPath and the automations uh, don't impede the ability of the mainframe apps to, to evolve. Using the technique that James just showed you when we're interacting with that same application, we do it without screen scraping. Because we live on the mainframe and under the covers of CICS, we're able to interact with it, those applications unchanged in such a way that that 3270 data screen, the thing that paints the screen, never exists. Because it turns out that those mainframe applications think better than we ever gave them credit for. They think not in terms of rows and columns. That's an abstraction uh, that's created outside the application. They think in terms of field name value pairs, which is virtually the same metaphor, the same way that UiPath thinks about data. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make, we're trying to expose applications in a way that is far more resilient. Clearly, from an implementation standpoint, uh, writing terminal, writing objects that use terminal sessions can be fairly complex because you have to get everything just right. When you write a bit of JavaScript, the way James just showed, it's really simple. Uh, and, the, and it's just, it's, it's very easy. You don't have to know anything about rows and columns. You don't have to know about wait times. You don't have to wait for a screen to, to resolve or, or determine when it's your time to, to send input. And most importantly, when you're using terminal sessions uh, with UiPath, the mainframe impact is either moderate to high, uh, depending upon the amount of transactions. When you're using a RESTful service, the impact is what we would say is low to moderate, again, based upon the number of transactions that you're running. Now, Anders, all that, bring, that brings us back to usually our recommendations for uh, uh, customers, and that is for existing automations that you have built uh, using uh, terminal sessions under RPA, or for that matter, a terminal emulation approach with any RPA platform, uh, we would uh, urge them to consider uh, analyzing the impact uh, 
A, understand it, and then probably identify some high priority automations that should be optimized. And Russ, For new sorry, yeah. when you say analyzing uh, these automations, uh, can we do that automatically because uh, we are allergic to manual work? So do we have applications <laughs> that, can, that can do this? Yes, we can actually do that. What We have a tool uh, where if a, if a customer sends us some data, uh, the mainframe and CICS <clears throat> um, produces a lot of data about each and every interaction. Uh, so what we do is we have a customer send us um, a, a, set, a bit of that data for a segment of time, probably uh, no less than four hours, but no more than 24 hours. We then use an analytics platform. We happen to use Splunk to be able to analyze those interactions. And we're able to both gauge the impact and then identify those UiPath automations that would be probably the, the, the low hanging fruit the ones first to, to automate. Cool. And of course, for new automations, we would obviously encourage the use of a RESTful service to create them. All in all, here's the summary. Uh, it's, it's a reality that as mainframe RPA activity scales, it can have a negative impact, not only on the mainframe, but also uh, really on the individuals trying to use RPA for good and valuable purposes. Uh, the impact is 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 expensive. It's largely not well understood, but Anders, with the analytics tool we just mentioned, you're able to see it. And certainly, we have tools and expertise to help organizations solve this problem, and it would be our pleasure to do it. Probably the easiest way for someone to get started is to go to our website and download uh, this particular uh, guide. It walks through in written form and maybe in a bit more detail exactly what we've done here today. And as always, we uh, we love to talk about this topic and we love questions. In fact, speaking of questions, Anders, how about some questions? Uh, you, you guys told me that we could uh, ask about anything. So there's Aras, he asked about your salary, Russ. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That uh, we there's no questions. I think you uh, came around the topic really nice, and I'll make sure that we, if you viewers, if you're watching this video afterwards, I'll make sure that we bring all the questions to Russ. Either make him come back here and answer them in the comment section, or I will uh, post them on LinkedIn and have him answer them there. And if you like this uh, live session, again, you can help us a lot by simply just clicking a thumbs up to this video and give us a comment, um, a question. And is there something you will add, Russ? No, uh, we just are thrilled to have had this opportunity. Thank you very much, Anders. And, and for anyone out there uh, who, who is working with UiPath, uh, interacting with mainframe applications, particularly those that run under CICS, please give us a call. We'd love to hear from you and talk about any challenges or opportunities uh, we may have together. And one thing I'll add is that uh, I'll have a nice host bridge, another session that I recorded a month ago. I will link to that up here in the right corner after this session has uh, been processed. So you can watch uh, an even longer interview with these nice host bridge guys, post bridge guys afterwards. So thank you for today, Russ, Jerry and James. Don't for, and, and don't forget, there's that free guide for UiPath and mainframe automation is on our website. Go get it. And actually, Sanmuka, Atula, Aras, they all say thank you for the session, uh, Russ. Thanks You're for taking welcome. your time. Thanks for having us, Anders. <laughs>